Can you please tell us about the newly found third type of supernova? You have been asking many questions from the past three sessions. I hope you are okay. So here we are. The what is the so let's first talk about the first two types of supernova. There's the type one supernova and the type two supernova. So let's talk about type two first, which is strange, but let's talk about that first. Uh, so the type two supernova is when you have a star. So first, let's talk about our own sun. Will our own sun go supernova? It won't. It is too small to to undergo a supernova explosion. So our sun basically contains about seventy three percent hydrogen, twenty five percent helium, and then some other trace trace traces of other heavier elements. And the nuclear energy, I mean the nuclear reaction within the sun, is the fusion of hydrogen into helium. So that is what drives the the but that is what uh, drives the sun now after the hydrogen is used up most of it the sun will fuse helium into a heavier element and the sun doesn't have enough mass to fuse heavier elements than this so once the hydrogen and helium fuel, fuel is used up the sun will become a red supergiant and eventually the outer layers will fly off into outer space and what will be left behind will be a white dwarf and that will be the end of the sun's existence as a star that's how it will cool, slowly cool down now when you have a star that is between 10 to 25 solar masses it is able to fuse heavier and heavier elements so it keep it goes on fusing heavier elements to uh, to uh, create energy fusion energy until it reaches the element of iron and iron basically Uh, to fuse iron it takes more energy than the 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 fusion reaction is able to give out so iron is basically nuclear ash and once a star a star starts creating iron in its core its lifetime can be measured in milliseconds so once the iron is formed in the core of a star which is between 10 to 25 solar masses it within a fraction of a second its energy output ceases and this entirety of the star all the outer layers enormous outer layers that are being pushed out and held up by this by the energy of the fusion reaction they all collapse onto the core of the star and they collapse onto the core of the star and then they bounce out and that is a supernova explosion and what's left behind at the core is a neutron star so this is called a type 2 supernova if a star is heavier than 25 solar masses you won't have a neutron star which will form at the center it will be a black hole now if you have a star now what is a type 1 supernova a type 1 supernova is a strange supernova in which you have a large star and a neutron star that uh, and a white dwarf and a white dwarf that are that are orbiting each other so it's a binary star system two stars a regular star and a white dwarf So let me show you what this looks like. Hang on. Let me make this. Yeah, here we are. So you have a regular star here, if you can see the image, and it it has a companion star which is a white dwarf, a small one, and in this system, the white dwarf star is stealing material from its companion star. Okay, so this is the that type of this is that that type of system, a binary system. two stars in which the white dwarf is stealing material slowly slowly from its companion star now there is something called the chandrashekhar limit which is 1.4 solar masses which is as big as a white dwarf can get now this white dwarf is stealing material from its companion star so it's getting larger once it reaches the chandrashekhar limit and exceeds the limit it essentially vaporizes in a, in an enormous explosion and that is called a type 1 or type 1a supernova it's also called a standard candle because we know exactly how much luminosity it will have so this is a type 1 supernova a white dwarf detonates and destroys its companion star in the process that's a type 1 supernova now we have a third type of supernova which has been hypothesized but it seems to have been discovered recently so this is a star which is between 8 to 10 solar masses now a star is basically when it is it is uh, so it is basically held, held up by electron degeneracy pressure which is a quantum effect in which electrons don't want to be too close together so they push against uh the star 
the star's exterior and that's what holds the star into this in in this shape now when certain uh, nuclear reactions happen so basically i'll tell you about quantum degeneracy what it is all the matter that we see it is able to have a certain shape because of quantum degeneracy pressure so that is a quantum effect which gives the universe and the world that we see the shape it is it, it's what makes matter solid it is not electrostatic repulsion it is quantum degeneracy pressure that that gives solidity to matter so it is a quantum effect that we actually see in real life even though we don't realize it so this electron degeneracy pressure basically pushes back against the outer layers of the star which want to fall back inside but in this type of star between 8 and 10 solar masses at a certain stage what you have is that uh, you have electron capture a nuclear reaction that starts happening in which certain heavy elements start capturing electrons and these electrons fuse with protons and produce neutrons so suddenly this electron degeneracy pressure which is holding the star up it vanishes and the star implodes and then explodes so there is a third type of supernova that has recently most likely been discovered it's called an electron capture supernova so it seems that we have finally de- detected this type of supernova we i'm not sure what is left behind at the end of this thing is a white dwarf left behind is something else left behind i think it's still a matter of conjecture but this is what it is the type 3 supernova an electron capture supernova